Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Somebody say, Jesus, we love you for tonight. Come on, somebody celebrate the Holy Spirit. Come on. That is for your LC chairman. I said I want you to celebrate the Holy Spirit. I want you to celebrate the Holy Spirit. Give me some volume. I need some volume. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. I want you to celebrate the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? That you love me?
somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Tell somebody I have the life which is of God in the inside of me. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm ordained for this time. Yesterday is late. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. But you take a dini. You rest on with a sinner. You reach the spice, you want us into mercy.
him for his grace. Thank him for his grace. Come on, thank him for his grace tonight. It is all you need to go to the next level. It is all you need to meet the right people. It is all you need to enter your next place of increase. It is all you need. 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 (laughs) You don't need anybody in this world. You need God. You need God. You don't need anything in this world. You need God.
Celebrate God's love to us. Thank you, God, for your love.
Jesus' love is very what? Wonderful. Number one, I want to celebrate the people that went on the streets today. Hey! The town was talking while you were preaching. Hallelujah, somebody. The town was what? While you were what? Preaching. Come on, clap for those people. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Tomorrow is the... What do they call it? Huh? The finale. The grand finale of street preaching. Hallelujah. And then tomorrow I want to go deep. In the most... Ay, ay, ay. We are preaching the gospel even tomorrow. Tell your neighbor, tomorrow we are preaching the gospel. How many have preached the gospel for the first time on the streets? For the first time. It was your first time this time. Wow. How was it? Boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ignore the weather. Praise the Lord. Ignore the what? We're going to be out of here shortly. Saturday. Tell your neighbor Saturday. Ay, 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 ay. Tell somebody again Saturday. Tell him ay, 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 We are ready. Saturday is going to be unforgettable. Praise the Lord, child of God. Hallelujah. Saturday is going to be what? Unforgettable. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know what the what? Father, I thank you for the giving of your people. Multiply them. Increase them. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed and believed. Acts chapter 5 verses 12. Acts chapter 5 and verses 12. The Bible says, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the Bible says, and of the rest dust, no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick into streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Praise the Lord Jesus. And there came also a multitude of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. And the Bible says, And then the high priest rose up, and all that they were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, Nugu, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prisons. And the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Somebody say, this, These are the words of this life. We were commanded to speak the words of this life. We were not commanded to speak the words of, 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 of survival. We were commanded to speak the words of this life. Hallelujah. We were not commanded to speak the words of failure. We were not commanded to speak the words of suffering. We were not commanded to speak the words of excuse. We were not asked to speak the words of, 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 of sorrow. We were not asked to speak the words that are reasonable. The Lord anointed and ordained us, the Bible says, to speak the words of this life. The words of this life. We have entered, not we are entering, a season. Hallelujah. The season. Tell him, but we've entered the season. Tell him again and say, we've entered the season. To speak the words of this life. Some of us were raised in nominal Christianity. Where the pastor would spend a whole hour telling you what you can't do. And they're narrating to you, you see, you are a human being. Also, you can fail. You see, you are human. Because you are human, some things can be like this and that. Because you are also a human being. Some of you think that you are supermen from heaven. No. I also want you to wonder, some, one time some guy said, pastors are also human beings. I, I switched off the TV. You mean you are not a human being? No. The issue is... I am not, listen, they are also human beings. No, you have said they have a body. But you can't say they are also human beings. We are a hundred percent God beings. I switched off the television and I said, this is not my message. 
there's a certain man they're talking to. Why? Because they want to explain weakness. They want to explain. They have to have excuse for why things are not happening in their lives. Why things are not flowing the way they're supposed to be flowing. Why glory is not moving like it is supposed to be with heart. We are also human beings. We get heart. No, no. No. Tell your neighbor I'm not a human being. I'm more than a human being. I just have a human body. Tell somebody I just have a human body. But I'm a God being. I'm of the God kind. Something inside me. Something inside me. Is greater. Than the one which is in the world. Something in my spirit. Something inside me there. It is shining. Brighter than any man, any, any man can shine. It is wiser than any man in the world. It is stronger than any man in the world. There is something inside me. There is something inside me. Tell somebody there is something inside me. They are the words of this life. Now, read the scriptures very well. The Bible says, Fear came on the church. Why? Because power was being demonstrated left, right, and center. I told people we have entered, not we are entering. We have entered a time where men are going to fear you. Who is ready to receive it? I say I'm entering a time. I have entered actually a time where men have to fear me. Not because you have money. No, you have money, but that is not why they fear you. You have an anointing. You have something inside you. May you do things that scare people. May you do things that threaten people. May you do things that make people lose appetite and sleep. May men be moved with indignation because of what is working upon you. Hey! The words of this life. The words of this life. Some people think we're excited. No, we are more than excited. We are not excited. Excited is an understatement. The Bible says with joy. <laughs> with joy. What will you do? You will draw from the wells of salvation. If you want to walk a certain life in the spirit, you have to cause yourself to be of joy. Read the word of God and excite yourself alone. Hallelujah. Meditate upon it and let it blow you. Even if you don't have a reason to be excited, excite yourself. Hallelujah, somebody. And the Bible says that great signs, miracles, and wonders were wrought by them. And the next verse says that they brought the sick. And I love the way the KJV said. They brought the sick to put them under Peter's shadow. That it would overshadow them. <laughs> I don't know if some of you understand the healing power there. No. He says that the, the, at least that they pass of the, Peter, of, of, of the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow. I don't know where some of you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but the shadow of Peter comes with the imminent power to, to overtake disease. To overshadow anything. To overshadow it. This is a shadow of a man. I wish you know who you are. This is a shadow of a man. But it passes next to a man palsied. And is healed immediately. It passes next to a man possessed by demon spirits. And they live immediately. This, this is the shadow of a man. This is a shadow of a man. He, he hasn't even spoken anything. He's just walking his way. He's not even minding anything. No, the guy's just walking his way. But this is a shadow of a man. This is a shadow of a man. This is a... Oh, this... I wish you get where I'm getting. This is a shadow of a man. This is a shadow of a man. And he finds a man with a swelling. And the shadow bypasses. And in the spirit, it overshadows cancer. It overshadows. It overshadows. It overshadows HIV. It overshadows poverty. It overshadows. It overs Tell someone I'm not normal. And then they put them in prison. And while they're in the prison cell, the angel of the Lord comes. Come up one time. Go and preach the words of this life. Go. Can you think what I'm thinking? Just go and preach the words of this life. Leave those mad guys. They don't understand this life. Have you ever imagined if every time we are speaking the words of this life? It may, now he's talking of a kind of life. <laughs> he's talking of a kind of life. A kind of fast fruits. 
a kind, a kind, not, not, not normal people, a kind of light. He says, you will speak, God speak the words. That is the ultimate mandate for the New Testament church. Speak the words of this life. The days have come when men have to sit in offices and speak the craziest things possible. Not the normal things which can be made. No, we're talking about the things which are impossible. You wake up in the morning and tell them tomorrow we are selling a million dollars. You're mad. I said tomorrow we are selling a million dollars. They say, you're mad. No, no, let me say it again. I said tomorrow we are selling a million dollars. I say. And then you sell it. And after selling it, you enter the office like nothing happened. And they ask you, did you see the news? You see, I love, I love the, the drum around the Christ. He curses a fig tree. And then he goes in a city. And then comes back. And the scriptures are clear. He doesn't look there. Not because he can't go on the internet. He can't trust. No. Not because he can't check on the internet to see whether it, what he spoke came to pass. Now, that, at that point, prophecy goes to another level. It ceases to be the revelation of the things to come. <laughs> it becomes the revelation of the things that can become. Temuna chitegera. Wali wali naba mugani tomwako kujo ina jolaga. Wali wachi nina bachimugambe. Na hii wali wachi e gamba. Na nanti next year. Whether the devil wants it or not. I'm going somewhere. It's wonderful if the man of God tells you. But what if the guy was tired that day and he bypassed you? Hallelujah. The Bible says we have the sure word of prophecy with which we do good to heed like a light in darkness. It shines, the Bible says, until the day break. And the day star rises in your hearts. Some of you, you're waiting to be spoken upon. Huh? Don't wait to be spoken upon. Speak upon yourself. Speak upon yourself. He says, beloved, I wish that you all prophesy. Exhort comfort and edify yourself in the spirit. Don't wait for somebody to speak in your life for things to work. Uh -uh. Don't wait for the pastor to get on the pulpit to tell you where you're going. No. Sometimes even what men speak on the pulpit is too limited. Hallelujah. God says expected end. Sometimes you can raise your expectation even beyond what the preacher said. One time I was walking somewhere and I, I saw a book and I bought it. And it was something about ministry. And then I opened the pages and this man says, uh, this book is like a manual to teach pastors who want to grow from below 100 members to 1,000. I closed it. Go ye into the world. You're teaching a man how to grow a congregation to a thousand members. Go ye into the world. I said, Aya, this book is for somebody. It's for a man who is asking God to grow to a thousand members. Are you hearing me? And listen to me. It is not because I could see there are thousand. It is because I realized that there are certain things that are for certain people and they are not mine. Mama, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying. There are messages that people speak and I hear and I say, mm, this is good. But it is for some people. They think, I want somebody to speak to my spirit and I lose peace and appetite. I want somebody to provoke me to something. That... Is it not the one which said, I has not seen. He has not had, has not entered into the heart of man. Oh God, the words of this life. 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 God is trying to tell you. The Bible says with many things we err and offend. But if a man not offend. If a man not err in speech. He says if a man not offend. You see when the Bible says in many things. When the Bible says in many things we offend. Eh? Many people don't realize. He didn't say, Jesus just said, in many things we make mistakes. In many things we offend. But if a man offend, not in what? In other words, every time you speak below a certain level, God gets offended. It's an offense issue. It's not a mistaken speech. 
Friend, uh, uh, no, God doesn't say, uh, uh, you're speaking wrongly. No. God says you're offending me. It is offense to speak a certain way. I am believing God for a job. How can you believe God for a job, you? How can you believe God for a job, you? How can you believe for... You see, many people have not yet understood the first consciousness of salvation. The first consciousness of salvation is that you're not of this life anymore. You're not of this world, I mean, anymore. That's the first consciousness. That even though you're in them, you're not of them. See, they might be dark-skinned like you and I, but you're not of them. He says, even though you're in them, the devil says, you're not of them. Every time you walk around and look at a man, you say, and he's not born again, you have to remind yourself, I'm not of them. That is why when he's talking about the drawing back, he says, we are not of them which draw back. There is a kind of people that can draw back to perdition. What what did it? An agua. He says, we are not of them which draw back. We are not of them which, we are not of them. There are guys who give up. We are not the kind which give up. There are guys who fail. We are not of them. We are not of them. In other words, you're not their kind. Verse on your way. Stop talking like them. You're offending the spirit of grace. You're offending the spirit of grace. Tell somebody, don't offend the spirit of grace. If you are saved, you're the head and not the tail. Don't be sorry to be first. They find people and they tell them, wow, you, you, you are the best in this. I know, I'm trying. No, you're not trying. You're not trying. You understand? Yo, you're not trying. That is offense. That is offense. No, you're talking like human beings. No, when somebody says, you're the best in this, you can say, you can say that right again. They find you and say, eh, man, I didn't know you're rich. You get shocked and say, you didn't know. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. You didn't know. Oh. Oh. You didn't know. Oh. You feel sorry for them. But some of you start with any, ah, no. <laughs> um, we are trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but. Mm, yeah, it's. <laughs> no, nothing. Oh. He's humble. You're not humble. You're offensive. You're offensive. You're sorry that you're driving a nice car. You're sorry that you're sleeping well. You're sorry that you're eating well. You're sorry that you have nice hair. You're sorry. Because it... Tell somebody you can't offend the spirit of grace. Hallelujah, somebody. When somebody says, wow, you look... <clears throat> You say, mm, say it, finish it, <laughs> finish it, finish it, finish it, finish, say it, what do I look like? Tell you look good, ah, no, 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 that's offense. I'm higher than that, say something higher, say something higher, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. And walk unapologetically. Because we are in our malada. Where is our boasting? Uh uh. Where is our boasting? Where is our boasting? Faith. Faith. That's my boasting. Faith. Are you hearing me? You enter marriage disadvantaged. Oh, I am so humbled that you are marrying me. No. <laughs> If it is humility, the man wants humble yourself down and say, Sir, you are, you are lucky. But humble yourself. <laughs> You're a blessed man. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? The Bible says, Her husband shall be known. Go more scripture. Her husband shall be known. Her husband. Why, why did he say her, his wife? Some of you live identity because some people leave you again day. It's to their disadvantage. Listen. I am never on disadvantage. Even when things look like they are not working on my side, they are all working together. 
even if things look like they're not working now, everything that looks like is not working, it is working together for good. That is why I don't faint. I don't get discouraged. Even if I try, I fail. I used to say, what's wrong with me? How come I don't get discouraged? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because in everything I know, that this is a nature issue. Um, I've, I, you see, when the Bible says you've passed and been translated into the kingdom of light, you understand? You've passed from death into light, you understand? Into the kingdom of his light, you understand? He says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us. He has passed us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has translated us into the kingdom. The word kingdom there is realm. He has translated you and I into the realm of Christ. You are in the realm of Christ. You don't get it, did you? You're not just a religious person. You have been translated into the realm of Christ. From the power of darkness. From the power of darkness. Into the realm of his dear son. You know, you, you are in, You're where Christ is. Can I say it again? Tell somebody I'm where exactly Christ is. Tell him and say, I'm exactly where Jesus is. Tell him again and say, I'm exactly where Jesus is. And I'm not sorry. And I'm not sorry. The words of this life. The words of this life. Can Jesus be discouraged? Where do you get time to be discouraged? How can all things be yours and then you start saying, ah, yeah, this electricity. These days, there are people, there, there are people, you see, I, I deal with everyone according to their level. But there are people who are too mature, and somebody, you know somebody has worked with God for so long, and then they say, ha, apostle, I have a problem, I hang them up immediately. I'm not being rude. I just want to show them they have offended God and me. How can you say you have a problem? How do you, well, how do you begin, tell me how problems come. Ah, look at this unrealistic person. You see, these are the things that are misleading people. Now they say that you can't have problems. But real problems happen. Isn't it so? Then they ask another human being. Yeah. <laughs> I'm translated into the kingdom of his dear son. There are things that look like they are killing you, but they are not killing you. It's in your head. He says in many things we offend, but if a man offend not in speech. He says that man is a perfect man, ever to breed of the whole body. Not only the physical body, the body of Christ. In other God gives you the grace to give direction to the body of Christ. Some people are at the level of their own body. No. Do you know what people are looking for? People are looking for people who can give direction. Direction. Wisdom. is profitable to direct. He says you're able to bridle. You're able to, take the, you're able to take the church where it's supposed to go. The big, some of you, even without knowing, you offend. Even without knowing. Even your thought. If they enter your thought process, it's offensive. Why? Because you look at the things that are seen. You look at the things that you're going through. Even after this service, somebody will come to me and tell me, pray for me, Apostle. I'll slap you. I have a problem. No. Tell me, thank God with me. You cannot tell me that you have. How? How can you say, I have a... And God gets offended. He says, oh my God. This guy, they know who he is. Some of you scare God. You... you, you you shock him. You know, sometimes I was sharing with my pastors, and I said, sometimes I envision how heaven is. And a man stands on the pulpit and says, um, we have a problem today. And Apostle Paul touches Peter. Whoa, wait. Peter, who did you want to get Peter, did you just hear what the guy said? Oh my goodness. Oh my. And that's a New Testament creature speaking grace. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I have gone to eat food. You understand what I'm saying? Because I can't sit in such meetings. I am sure these guys attend Fanero. I am sure. Because they hear the words. 
of this life. This word is irresistible. I mean, the Bible says in scripture that when they that were of the Lord sat to speak the words of the Lord, what happened? A book of remembrance was written. God appointed a scribe. They were speaking the words of God. They started speaking some words and God said, uh-uh. These things can't be... You see? <laughs> the Bible says, They that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard, and the book of remembrance was written behold for him, for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Let me explain what it means. In heaven, there are manuscripts of some of our sermons. They are too precious to just end on a Thursday. Not that the... Not that the heaven doesn't know them. But because they are too beautiful to fall on the ground. He says this word shall not fall. You see what I'm saying? They are too beautiful for to them to just... They have to return back to him. There are men who start preaching. And, and God tells the man, start writing now. We need those sermons. Right. Because one day a random boy will be walking in the spirit and then he enters heaven. And then he starts to see books. Book of remembrance. And then he'll say, over oh, what is in there. And the title is, the words of this life. And then he's saying, huh. Then he enters there in the spirit. I don't know whether you're going with me there. And then he starts to read. And while he's reading, this boy preaches the next day. And they tell him, hey, you're speaking exactly like Apostle Grace. Do you believe it? I believe it too. I said I believe it too. Listen to me. God has called you and me to speak words like that. He has called you and that's the gospel. You enter in a place where everybody is disappointed and you say, "Ah, uh-uh, rise up, guys. I've come. I- I've come. What do you think you can do? Look at him. No, no, no. See, you don't need to understand what I can do. The fact that I've come, you need to relax. Why? I've come. <laughs> Why? I've Hallelujah. Even in things you don't know. I remember one time in KCB, we had a virus. It hit the bank. Basic things. eh? Not the system, but basic computers. And so I remember that time. Eh, The guys in IT said, now we don't know. They put every kind of antivirus. And then, by faith, by faith. You know my course, I won't mention it. It's not a bad course, but it wasn't IT. By faith, I went on that computer and I opened it and I said, I have life in me. I have life in me. I removed viruses manually and cleaned my one computer. And I called the guy in IT and I told him, I've cleaned it. How did you do that? I told him, there is a way I did it. He said, let me come now. He left the head office to come and see how I'm doing it. And I told him, hey... The words of this life. Some of you think you must have a certain education to do certain things. No. Have you ever sat on a panel and guys are speaking a language you don't understand? And then for a moment you say, but what am I doing here? And then you remember, I, uh, I have the life. Who is a witness here? Yeah, you've ever gotten a job. And then you sit in a meeting and guys are speaking things you don't understand in your mind. But you're seated there and they're asking an opinion. And some people even say things, you just start speaking. And they say, hey, wow, this is a good idea. You don't even know what you're saying. Because even though your body doesn't understand, the man of the spirit knows all things. That's why I tell Christians, don't be intimidated by degrees. Don't be intimidated by so many years of experience. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated 
Don't be intimidated. You, how long have you been married for you to talk about marriage? Come on. How long did Paul get married? How long was Jesus married? Come on. Tonkoya. Tonkoya. I know all things. And you think you are old enough to... No, you are old. You are old. There is grace that comes when you choose to believe in yourself. And what God has put in you. Respect the anointing. Don't speak below the anointing on your life. Don't speak below the anointing. You see, some of you, you have gone through too much. That it's easy to confess negative. You know, my brother, I've suffered. These last few thing, days, they've been like hell. <laughs> Even if you've been going through the worst situation, and I mean the worst, if somebody meets you, tell them I'm in the best days. I'm in my best days. Do you have a job? No, I don't, but I'm in my best days. Did you eat supper? I don't need to eat supper to be in my best days. I'm in my best days. <laughs> I mean, Abraham saw these days and danced. He must have seen something. He must have seen something to see my day and start dancing. Abraham, the Bible says, saw your day. He saw my day. He saw the day of the Christ. And how he would come and die and be raised from the dead. And how he would release life unto us. And then he said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He started dancing alone. That's the reason why we dance. We don't dance because everything is going on right, physically. We dance because we know the words of this life. Meditate on the words of this life. The moment a man starts to speak words that are not like this life, switch off. You know, some people talk like that. You know, one time I was in a service, and a dear man of God was preaching a sermon. He said, sometimes we only talk about the good things. But we are not preparing the Christians when calamity comes. I switched off to you. I honestly don't remember the rest. But I could hear sounds like, I could hear sounds like, you have to accept that bad days are in your life too. I say that, yeah, 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 yeah. That is the part where I switch off. Surely. Suffering. No. Surely. 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 And shall some the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. So what happens when stuff happens that is not agreeable to me? Simple. I refuse to think it's bad. I always think in my head, good is going to come out of this. Listen, tell somebody, even in this, good will come out. Tell them again, say, even in this, Good will come out. Good will come out. Good will come out. Good will come out. You don't stop believing. You don't stop believing. Some people try out things and they fail. Some of us, when we try things and they don't work, (laughs) we celebrate. What do you mean by that? Why? Because I don't see it as a failure. Some of us, it is, it, is, it is dangerous not to risk, you see. For some of us. I lose appetite when I've not risked. When, when, when I'm there and, and, and I'm playing safe on everything, I, I feel like I'm not walking in this life. I want to risk a bit and get live on camera and tell a guy, walk. If he doesn't walk... I look for another one. One does in an overnight. I don't know whether those guys were there. There were five people. And I say, there are people where you are deaf. Come. You remember that day? Five of them. 
They came in front. I thought it was going to be one. I said, there is someone. Five came. I went to the first one. Open. Have you heard? No. Nothing. No. I went to the second. Pa. Have you heard? Mm -mm. No. I went to the third. Have you heard? No. Many preachers I know. They would look for, a, for an escape line. Like, somebody raise your hands in the Holy Spirit and start to speak in other tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I talking to? But every time I was praying for this person and the ear doesn't open, I tell myself it's their problem. Why? Because the Bible says the power of God was present to heal. I don't pray for God to bring power from heaven. No. I am persuaded that every time I stand on a pulpit, the power of God is present to heal. That's my consciousness. Not only disease, poverty, and many other things. Do I have a witness? I went to the fourth. I said open. It opened. Have you heard? Yes. I went to the fifth. The fifth had. I went back to these ones. I asked them, what's your problem? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Can't you see that the other ones have opened? I put the blame on them. I went to the third again. I opened. She opened. They opened. I went to the, the, the third one failed to open and open. I went to the second, second last. I put again. It failed. I mean, it opened also. Then I went to the last one. And it failed. And I said, this is 90% success. Go back and sit. I have no time for unbelievers. <laughs> it is their problem, not yours. I'm a believer. Tell somebody I'm a believer. Saints. You know, some people say, it's not easy to Pray for a miracle in public. No, no, let's correct it in this life. Saints, it is very easy to walk in the miraculous in this life. Some time back, I cultivated something in my spirit. And I've, I've exercised for so long. Every time I come off the pulpit, I tell myself, Whew, that was easy. And I go to my car. I've, I, I studied for some time now. Every time I get off the pulpit, my heart says, Phew, that was so easy. Now, Thursday is my easiest day. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Tell somebody it is easy. Someone say, ha. Huh? And a dear Christian said, a dear Christian said, you know some people think that uh, ministry is easy. <laughs> and I told him, even me, I think like them. And so, because they respected me, they kept quiet. Yeah, I know it's easy, but what I'm trying to... No, 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 no. It is easy. That is why you'll get married easily. You'll build easily. You'll drive easily. You do everything easily. No, you can choose to walk in the other life or this life. But as for me and my house, we chose a certain life. And every success you have in this life, however hard it will look, always tell yourself, hmm, that was easy. I, I hear students on graduation parties, they first cry. But parents were angry. It is not easy. They even bleach their English. They bleach that. It is not easy. No, no, no. On your graduation day, while people are clapping, ta 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 ta, get the mic and say, um, I I don't know how. Easy this was. It was. 
So he is. He is. You are cultivating a certain nature. Because the Bible says that a man thinks. No, so, the Bible says so does he become. You are present continuous. It was easy. Let me tell you, I went through campus. And I must confess, don't copy me if you are not in this life. Some, some reverend sat me down and told me, uh, uh, come young man. He was about 40 something. He was also the same guy in the class with the cla- in the same class that I was. So a guy had come to do a certain education. He was a bit old. So sometimes he would even doze in class. And then they clap. And then he wakes up. And then he also starts clapping. <laughs> so one time the guy saw me over preaching. He sat me down and told me, um, I'm a preacher too. But um, you are over preaching. <laughs> and chances are that as if you over preach you will fail. I looked at the guy and I saw we are two different people. The Bible says don't answer elders. I didn't answer. (laughs) Ask my OBs as among the best in the class. Not by faith. No. Easy. I'll just sit in class and everything enters. I say what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I mean, why does the guy look at me like I'm going to fail? You understand what I'm saying? Kumbe, I was dealing with a man in the other, in another life. Praise the Lord Jesus. I refuse to think a certain way. I would, we would, we would, approach exams and I just open a book like this and everything I remember it and I say my God what is this what is this answer auntie I want you to answer this life <laughs> praise the Lord Jesus praise the Lord Jesus get to a level where you do things and men get shocked and then you walk away like nothing happened yeah 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 it's okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. But that is big. No, no. Have you seen how we do miracles in Fanero? We, we make them so why? Easy. I want to walk a life of things that are working easy. Even when I'm speaking in tongues, I don't force them. They just flow. They are slippery. Then you find it. You, find, you hear another person saying, you know, Apostle, pray for me. I've been struggling to pray. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> and he said, which kind of life are you? How can you struggle to pray? I don't struggle to pray. Yes, I can wake up and I'm feeling funny. But that day make me struggle. No. Because I don't have the consciousness to struggle. I'm not conscious. I, I, even if I try and I say, let me try. But some of you, you even have it on your walls. The struggle is for the fittest. <laughs> you're straining yourself to be struggling enough for you. You're, you're training to fitness to struggle. Praise the Lord Jesus. You're losing appetite and sleep because you think you must struggle. Those are not the words of this life. That is not how so you learn Christ. If indeed he be in you. The Bible says be not like the Gentiles. They've been alienated from the life which is of God. They are separated from the life which is of God. Their understanding is darkened. And they are ignorant in their own mind. Because of the blindness in their heart. So they are alienated. They are separated from the life of God. They oh, Do you know how many people think that they have to struggle in this life to be something? Do you know how many people think that they have... Oh, it doesn't mean we don't work hard. It only means that the point where work begins, grace takes over. Paul said, I labored more than all my brethren, yet not I, but the grace of God that labored in me abundantly. If you're entering the unlimited life, rest... Praise the Lord Jesus. Do what? Rest. You see, some of us were delivered very early. Very, very early. 
Very, very what? Ali. I told people a story one time. One time I, I didn't have money in my pocket many years ago. And I took this wonderful couple to a meal. And I told them, I want to take you out. Now don't do, again I repeat. If you're not of the spirit, please don't do this stuff. You'll land people in trouble. And then I, I, I told them, order anything you want, mama. These guys ate food. And in a very expensive restaurant. You understand what I'm saying? And in my head, I, I was saying, <laughs> they must... You see, that time, it was many years ago. You see, faith also has levels. There are people who are believing for God to pay rent. To pay off a debt. <laughs> and there are people who are believing God to lend nations. You see, that was also my level of faith. Then, you understand what I'm saying? And, and I've realized that also you have to grow in faith. You have to grow in what? Some of you say, I, I believe God to pay my debt. Leave that level. Say, I've believed. I have believed God to lend this nation. But that was my level. But it worked. So I tell them, order. And then when they order, they eat. They eat. I also order and I say, Wapi, we are all going together. Us. Come what may, we are all going what? Together. We ordered a very expensive meal. And after the meal, I tell them, bring the bill. I honestly don't know what is going to happen between bill coming to my wallet. Whether God was going to produce money and I remove my wallet and it is there, it was up to him. Oh. That is why me, I fear when I'm not risking. Apostle Emma, I fear when I'm not risking. I worry and I say, why am I not risking in faith? Why, why, why aren't I pushing myself? Why, why aren't I doing something scary? I fear when I'm not doing something scary. I fear. A woman comes. Then she says, excuse me, sir. Somebody just paid the bill. I acted like it was normal. Nenga inside, I'm saying this life. <laughs> and I told her, we're in a hurry. Go make sure that you, they've really paid that money. She said, okay. She went back. Two minutes later, she comes back and says, sir, they have paid. And then immediately her supervisor comes following. You know, sir, don't worry actually. A certain lady came and paid and left. Without money. I mean I can buy without money. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. I mean I can buy without money. Drive to expensive plots of land. Enter expensive bonds. Are you hearing me? Test drive if they allow you in Uganda. Now in Uganda, you test drive from where? The cars in showrooms are the way they are locked up. Ugandans can't test drive. The guy will take it. Not you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Enter a shop and try in an expensive suit. And ask them, how much is this? How much is this? All right. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. Okay. All things are yours. One time I entered a shop out of the country <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> and then they said, can I see that watch? They gave her a wrist watch. And then she put it on. Then they asked, she, she asked, how much is it? And I tell her about $8,000. <laughs> what about that one? <laughs> the rest she didn't ask. <laughs> How about that one? How about that one? Thank you. <laughs> Tell somebody embrace this life. Tell them embrace this life. Enter in shop and they tell you, oh, how much is it? $10,000. This watch is $10,000? Yes. 
Hmm, I thought it was more. You guys are fair price. This is good. This is good. So what's the guarantee? Ask questions. When you walk out, don't talk to the shop owner. No. Talk to that watch that day. Tell it, darling, I'm coming back for you. I've given, given you a name. You're Maxi. In the name of Jesus. I've given, you give it even a name. You tell it they can't sell anybody. But they can't sell Maxi. <laughs> Tell your neighbor this life. Name things. Name anything a man is selling. Name it for you. Because there is power. You see, God created mysteries here. Huh? After some man was lonely. In other words, he, he wanted something. And then he created these creatures. And he says, he brought them to man to see what man would call them. And everything the man called them, they are up to this day. He called a cow a cow. In your language, it's a ente, but it's a cow. You know, it's a spiritual name. You don't get it. Name stuff. Tell your neighbor, name stuff. Get Join, join with them in the spirit. Are you hearing me? Tell them you're mine. You're mine. When you get to a property you like, eh? drive to it, look at it, give it a name. How much are you selling? No, don't name things people are not selling. Name things people are what? Selling. You say, how much is it? 800 million. Hmm. I'll get back to you. The moment you're walking away, you say, Father, you said, every place I step, I shall possess. Now I give this one a name. Name it. And then drive there every day you have time. In your free time, just go and look at it. Me, that's what I do. You conceive it. You go and look at it. And every time you're communicating to it, you start wooing it. Are you hearing me? The next thing you know, it starts to feel shy. That's coming to you. <laughs> Charlotte is my witness. One time there was a car I wanted to buy. I entered the showroom and I looked at it. Huh? And when I looked at it, I sat in it. And then I sat in it. And then my heart told me, this one is your baby. Are you hearing me? I was not thinking about where a man... Ah, ah, ah. Are you hearing me? The words of this life wouldn't allow me. Are you hearing me? Then after that, when I finished, after like uh, two weeks, I carried somebody. Come and escort me. We went back to my baby. I looked at her. <laughs> But I, I was showing them a car. In my heart, you know what I was saying? I, I was telling the car, I'm back. <laughs> you remember what I told you that I'll be back for you? <laughs> I'm back three times. Fourth time I was buying it. What are you saying? What are you saying? All the money I needed came just like that. Why? Because I know how the words of this life work. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're a student and you're struggling with Max. Write 98 or 99 or 100 and start looking at the, as max. You understand? The day you fail a paper and then you see 25, change it and put 95. Then start looking at it every morning. Put it on your fridge. Hallelujah. Do you even have refrigerators in hostel? Put it on your wall. And say, night man, I wish some of you know the things that I do. Anything that I need to deal with, I, I write it down very well and I put it somewhere. Every time I'm out, I just wake up in my free time, I open like this. Today, this afternoon, to this afternoon, can I tell you what I was doing this afternoon? From three, about 3.30, 4 to 5.30, I was building a church. <laughs> I went on the internet. 
I said to look most beautiful churches, interior. <laughs> now the chairs will sit here. The camera will be here. This will be here. No, this one I think is a bit shorter. Let it extend the other side. No, this chair, this one, when somebody gets laid, it might break their back. And it's like, <laughs> for you, for you, you're looking at everything that is not working. You sit down for one hour and then you do like this. Hey, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They tell, you go to the doctor and they tell you, you're barren. Immediately they start telling you, you swell your stomach. You push it out. Hallelujah. You do what? You push it out. Every morning, you push out your stomach. And then you widen your legs a bit like they do it. And you start doing like this. When someone is coming, you walk no more. When they disappear. <laughs> Who am I talking to? The words of this life. Praise the Lord Jesus. Recently somebody came and gave me a testimony. And, and she told me they proposed to her. Where are you? Put up your hand. Look at them. You see, non-believers. They think I'm talking about someone. They think I'm talking about... <laughs> Woo! You're too fast. The words of this life. Get to your feet. Get to your feet. I'm sorry I didn't read testimonies of last week. Hearing was healed. Somebody, deaf person was healed. Uh, somebody addicted to narcotics and drugs was healed. A broken neck was restored. An infection in the stomach was healed. ATC, ATC. Praise the Lord Jesus. Tell your neighbor, we are going to pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Tell your neighbor, we are going to pray. Get some space, somebody. We're going to pray. Tell somebody we're going to pray. The words of this life. 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 Now, I'm going to give us not less than five minutes. Not less than five minutes. Are you hearing me? We are going to speak some of the craziest things the devil has ever heard. The Spirit of God is here and so strong. And I want to charge you by God. Never speak anything that does not become sound doctrine. Never speak, never open your mouth to speak anything that are not the words of this life. I know some of you have gone through too much. It's not what you've gone through. Saints, it's not what you've gone through. It's who you have. It's who you have. David says, I had fainted if I had not believed. Tonight you're walking off this ground a different person. I say, tonight you're walking off this ground a different person. Where is this charity from? There's a small little charity I need to pray for. Is she around? Is she around? No. 
Where is she? The brown one. Small brown. There's a little small brown child here I need to pray for. Put up your hand if you're the one. There's a little small charity. This one. Come, come. Come, come. I need an usher. Put up your hands. In the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to speak the craziest words of this life. Do I have a witness? Open your mouth. Start speaking. I'm going to give you five minutes. Not less than five minutes. Something. Listen, you have to leave this ground <laughs> different.
I said you are a wonder in this world. Men will look at you and say, what is inside you? How were you made? Which day were you born? Why is everything working for you? It is not by power. Not by might. But by His Spirit. Hey! Listen. Like I told you. This is a season where all limitation all limitation all manner of limitation is forgotten it is forgotten who believes it come on say I'm not limited I'm not limited in wisdom I'm not limited in finances. I'm not limited in knowledge. I'm not limited in revelation. I'm not limited in the anointing. I cannot be limited. I speak the words of this life. I'm a miracle worker. I'm a miracle worker. I change things. Everywhere I go. I bring life. I believe it. I know it. I'm persuaded of it. Nothing can change it. No man can take it away from me. It is mine. It is mine. The next few years. Listen to me. I have lived long enough to hear people say things that don't work in their lives. Because they speak from here. Speak from here. I don't know how you're going to make it. But inside I feel it. That the words of this life. Will work in you. Like the shadow of Peter overshadowed disease. Let your thoughts overshadow the things in this life. Let your meditations overshadow the things in this life. Let your name overshadow things in this life. Some of you, you'll be places and they'll mention your name. And the demon will leave and say, I know him. Apollo, I know. Paul, I know. Put your name. I know. The days of struggle are over. Embrace things coming easy. I believe things are happening for me easy this year than ever before. 2018. Things are going to be easier. Tomorrow morning. I'm walking in an easier grace. More easy than it was today. Even though today was easy. If you're a pastor and you're in this place, I feel led to speak this in your life. And you're a minister here. May you build easy. May your ministry be built easy. If you're a business person, may business happen easy. May doors open easy. If you're a married person, May your marriage, oh, 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 I see great deliverance in that area. May your marriage be easy. May everything come easy. May everything come easy. May you dispel every thought that things are hard. May education come easy. May your next deal come so easy. May your next job come so easy. And I prophesy that upon some of you who are believing God for jobs. They'll easily call you. Easily interview you. Easily hire you. Easily pay you. 
In the name of Jesus. I refuse to live the life of men. I refuse to live the life of normal men. I refuse to live the life of mere men. That is not your portion in the name of Jesus. It will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. There are people here. There is... Listen. See, all of us were called to do signs, miracles, and wonders. And according to our level of faith, we can just shift from signs, miracles, and wonders to special miracles. And there are people of that kind whose faith is ready to receive this. Some of you, you're walking into a life of special miracles. And very easy. Start to receive it. According to your level of faith. According to your level of faith. According to your level of faith. Wherever you enter, you'll cause change easily. Handkerchiefs touching you, going to the sick, they'll be healed easily. Watch what's going to happen on Saturday. People are going to be healed easily. Tonight, the canopy of struggle has left a man's mind for good. You will not imagine struggle, you will not struggle, you will not meditate struggle, you will not conceive struggle it, it is far from you now I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise clap for God like it has happened in your life who believes it Wow. I believe it too. I believe it too. You remember? You remember the time we were in that building and I told you that we're going to start increasing and we are adding chairs almost every Thursday. Listen. This is nothing. There's another thing coming. <laughs> There's another thing coming. Some of you are going to forget Fanero like you know it. We are adding chairs almost every Thursday. But now, there is another thing coming. And you're going to be witnessing it. And you'll say, surely the Lord lives among men. Hallelujah. I love the way the scripture says it. The gods have appeared in the likeness of men. That's not a mistake. They could not say men have appeared in the likeness of God. Uh -uh. The gods. Men will look at you and say, the gods. Somebody say, it's mine. Men will look at how you do things and they'll say, the gods have appeared in the likeness of men. I'm excited where I'm going. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.